Okay, I've literally got uh, the first question I asked literally 51 years ago, right? In a classroom in East London, how do I improve what I'm doing? And I've been researching my practice ever since in relation to a dialogue between epistemology and ontology. Now, in 15 minutes, what all I'm hoping to do is just to excite you about possibilities because this is my web page and it's actionresearch.net. And if you get into that, the notes to uh, support this talk you can access here. So you can just click and you can get into those and you can actually email me at the address at the bottom of the page. What you'll see there's a lot of information including over 32 doctorates that I supervised uh, to successful conclude between 96 and 2012 at the University of Bath. So you'll see on the left hand side there's an awful lot of data if you want to access it. But to just to stimulate you, and if you've got anything that you want to raise in these 15 minutes, please do, because I don't like this uh, presentation, and then wait, and then you've got another three, and then you can ask questions, okay? So if you've got something that you want me to follow or ask, you know, just answer, please raise it. Okay, now, all I really want to focus on are transformations that have taken place, in my understanding, of educational research as, and it literally is as opposed to education research. Now, it isn't that I don't use the theories of philosophy, psychologists, sociologists of education. I do use those theories, but what I reject is what became known as the disciplines approach to educational theory, which constituted educational theory by those disciplines. That's what was claimed, made up educational theory. Now, I'm listening to quite a lot of the presentations at the conference, people are still operating with that view of educational theory. They're actually education researchers, and they very rarely say what they are meaning by educational. And what I'm meaning by educational is learning with really <laughs> values that carry hope for the flourishing of humanity. I insist that if it's educational, it not only involves learning, but you've got to justify the values that you're using in relation to your understanding of the ones that carry hope for the future of humanity. So there is that big distinction between education research and educational research. The reason it's important is that if you follow, for example, Jeff Whitty, who unfortunately died uh, several weeks ago, Jeff was president of the uh, British Educational Research Association and in his presidential address, he was claiming that we should change the name of the Educational Research Association to the Education Research Association because, in my judgment, as a sociologist, Jeff was still interested in controlling what counted as educational research. You've got the executive director of the American Educational Research Association, even up to two years ago, writing to all of the publishing people in ARA to say that she wanted them to use education rather than educational research. Am I making sense here in terms of this, if you like, um, the colonization of what is an educational researcher by the education research community. Now, having said that, I just want to take you through now very quickly three epistemological transformations that have taken place in my relationship between my epistemology and ontology. And it's all in the paper that you can access here. Now, the first one, is I came with a first degree, a joint honours in physics and chemistry. And that's how I started my life as a science teacher. That's what I believed. I believed that positivist science in terms of controlled experimental designs, the um, elimination of error, the elimination of I, that I was to be removed from the accounts. You did not put it in your explanations. And that's how I started my research literally at the uh, University of London as I registered for the academic diploma and their master's degree. My master's degree is positive science, applied to my science department, asking about understanding scientific inquiry. As I started to conduct and went on with that inquiry three or four years, I began to see that what I was doing was testing the validity of Piagetian cognitive stage theory and Bloom's taxonomy. I was not answering my question, how do I improve my practice in relation to the learning of my students? Right, so that's one epistemology that I had to emancipate myself from as I moved on. And I moved into dialectics. And so for the next 15 years or so, my doctorate was on a dialectical approach to educational inquiry. Dialectics, as you might know, has got a nucleus of contradiction. 
And one of the best theoreticians was actually a man, a Soviet guy called Edward Ilyenko. He asked the question, if an object exists as a living contradiction, what must the thought be that expresses it? Because our history of two and a half thousand years has been a battle between the propositional theorists, grounded in the logic of Aristotle, and the dialecticians with that nucleus of contradiction. Am I making sense here? Because Popper eliminated contradiction from correct thought. The dialecticians were saying, no, actually, contradiction is the nucleus of correct thought. Now, that's what I embraced in my epistemology and ontology up to about 1999. I got my doctorate on that, and it was where the I exists as a living contradiction in relation to both my ontology and my epistemology. But then, as I moved on and started to look at what I developed as a sense of what I call living educational theory, and I put this idea forward to distinguish it from the discipline's approach. And my idea of a living educational theory is that each person in this room can generate a valid explanation of your educational influence in your own learning, the learning of others, and the learning of the social formations that influence your practice and understandings. So I hope you've got that idea of a living educational theory is not drawn or derived from the disciplines, which I value enormously in some of their insights, but you've got to create your own living educational theory if you want a valid explanation of your educational influence in your own learning and the learning of others. Now, the transformation that I had to then undergo was that existing as a living contradiction was too limited when I came to the latest phase of my research, which is looking at the influence of living theories and the learning of social formations. I needed to start researching from within community. And that brought me into Gregory Bateson's idea of an ecology of mind. I had to develop an inclusive approach to my research, which actually required a different ontology and epistemology. I had to develop a relationally dynamic understanding of both the epistemology and the ontology. So the dialectics weren't enough. I had to emancipate myself from that and move into a different epistemology, which I've documented in this paper here, and you'll see some all my recent writings I then transfer into this section here about Jack White's writings, and you'll see the development from those early 1972 writings as a positivist into the dialectics, now into the sense of a relationally dynamic awareness, which I just hope you are experiencing with me, because what I tried to do in this transformation into the epistemology and ontology is to use digital video data a lot. That's why I videotape myself here. And what I'm hoping that you experience, even now, is a certain energy, which I believe that I am expressing in this context. And I hope you feel my enthusiasm and a life-affirming energy that is actually part of my research. Not only that, but I work with a lot and research within a lot of different communities. And I use the digital video to actually show myself acting within those communities. Now, what I do with digital video is, I would just like every week, I've got um, students that actually are, here we are. Now, the sound is not important for this one, but this was on the 12th of July at the University of Cumbria. This is one of my research students, Margaret Blasley. She researches Adlerian psychotherapy with ideas like community feeling and social interest. Now, what Margaret is doing is actually using the um, digital video. If I move, this is what you can do with digital video. You can, have you ever used this yourselves on your own practice where you can move the cursor along very quickly and it shows you that embodied expression of both your energy and meanings. And if you look at the top right, you can see one of the research communities that I'm part of. They're actually now in conversation together, but they are in community. And the relational dynamic between us all, I'm saying, has got to be taken account in terms of both our ontology and our epistemology. And this is what Margaret is actually demonstrating. She's creating a visual narrative using this as data, to actually show this meaning here. This is a Canadian researcher whose PhD integrates love, being loved into learning into her thesis. 
And these embodied expressions of meaning cannot be actually communicated through printed text. Now, I'll just, let me just pause there, because I know that there's a lot to take in there, and especially this latest transformation of mine, where the epistemology and ontology is using the digital visual data to communicate meanings, not only of the theory of knowledge, because it's relationally dynamic, I need to show myself responding to people like yourselves, this is why I love questions to come in this. I hate if you do what I'm not doing, which is, I'm talking at you basically, I'm hoping that something is communicating, but it actually denies the very dialogical form of educational practice that I believe in. You know, it's only if I got your questions and I could respond and then we can actually share what you're doing and we can actually develop together that would bring us into this form of research. Okay, but I'll pause because I've got about two minutes left. Which is, is there anything? I know we've got questions at the end. But from what I've just said, is there anything that you're feeling you would like to um, hear more about or to understand better? Or have I communicated clearly or just confused? No? Oh, yes? Uh, I might want to compliment. <coughs> is living education theory like, um, does everybody have their own theory? Or uh, is there some generic theory? Or... No, it is. It, it is very much that. I hope you, that you got that from what I was saying. That each one of you can create your own valid explanation of your educational influence. And your explanatory principles are the unique constellation of values that you use to give meaning and purpose to life. So each of the 32 uh, doctoral theses I supervise between 96 and 32, each one has got their own unique um, and original, that's why it was, they were all chosen as original contributions to knowledge, but each one had got their own unique constellation of values as explanatory principles. And these are ontological values, the values you use to give meaning and purpose to your life in terms of your view of education and your research. So there is no generalizability in the traditional sense of theory. Are you okay with this? Because traditional theory, you derive the explanation of an individual from the general theory. Now, in my experience, no existing theory from any of the disciplines, individually or in any combination, could produce a valid explanation of my educational influence with my children <coughs> within the school. So I had to create my own. So it's not derived from any general theory, it's actually generated, you test the validity of it, and I go into the ways of testing validity using Habermas's criteria of social validity, but it's a very rigorous, intellectually uh, justifiable process. You wouldn't get 32 doctorates, and there are 40 of them on that, um, in the Living Theory section of my webpage, from universities all over the world that have taken this idea and worked with it. So, yeah. Is it a relativistic theory? Some? Is it relativistic? Relativistic. It isn't in terms of, um, you don't relate this in terms of relativism. You know, you're, yes, two minutes, okay. What you've got to do is to actually clarify the meanings of your values through your practice. So I did with creativity, academic freedom, others have done it with love, justice, compassion, and they've clarified and communicated the meanings of their values in the course of their inquiry and they've tested the validity with others of their explanation of their educational influence. But it isn't relative to other explanations or other living theories. I use the um, theories from traditional theories. You know, I use sociology, I use psychology, philosophy in particular. But none of those theories can actually explain my educational influence. And this is why the energy, I'm saying each one of you have got a life-affirming energy that you express within your practice. I'm sorry, I think, but go on this one. You said that the, in the core of this practice is contradiction. That was earlier on, the dialectics, yes. And so how does that uh, come into this uh, generating your own theory? It, it's just that you can draw on the, those three phases. Traditional theory, I use I, Fromm's work. Traditional, you know, uh, conceptual theory in my own. When it comes to dialectics, I use the idea of a living contradiction because I see myself all the time as a living contradiction and that helps me to move forward. But then, when I move into this quality of relationship, I don't at the moment experience myself as a living contradiction in the communities that I'm researching within. There is a love and an energy which doesn't have contradiction as its base. It has that certain uh, hope about the flourishing of humanity. So it, it, it's using each of the epistemologies and ontologies from the tradition. You don't abandon those completely, 
but you emancipate yourself from some of the limitations. And I'm sorry I've got to finish now, but maybe there are two questions at the end that we could follow up. Okay, well, many thanks. Thank you.